Welcome to today's question and answers. Our first question is, can you explain resource guarding? I guess there is a video of two dogo pups fighting over food. So resource guarding is exactly what it sounds like. The guarding of a resource or protecting a resource. A resource can be you, a toy, food, anything that the dog values as its resource. It's territory, it's bed, um, anything can become a resource once the dog thinks that it's theirs and they want to protect it. Now in nature, resource guarding is very valuable because it ensures the survival of the animal. Um, if you have a limited supply of a certain thing, food, water, um, things like that, you want to kind of resource guard because it's only the strong survives. Unfortunately, they still have some of these instincts in them and they're not necessarily bad, they're just instincts that the dog has in them. So yes, they, this puppy is guarding the resource. Those who don't know or haven't seen this video, it's a video circulating on the internet. It is two dogo puppies fighting over food. Um, yes, the dominant puppy will prevail and he will tell the other puppies to relax. Some dominant puppies don't care, um, but this puppy is, being, is, do, is doing essentially resource guarding over his food. Now, um, this has to do with dominance and things can always change. Dominance is not always a thing where you stay dominant, okay? The puppy that is submissive in this video doesn't mean that he will always be submissive. That can change with one little interaction of a fight and uh, when he knows what he's about. But these puppies are about similar in age and it's more the tenacity of the first dog that makes the second dog back down. Um, but yeah, this is a resource guarding over food. Some dogs will resource guard uh, other dogs, but they won't resource guard humans because they don't see humans as a threat. Uh, pit bulls are, are those kind of dogs where, in my opinion, a good pit bull will not resource guard against a human at all, um, but another dog, they, they definitely will, so they can see the difference. Generally, they will see whoever's lower on the totem pole as far as dominance in the pack as um, a threat. The higher you go in the hierarchy, generally they won't resource guard. So if you see uh, an older dog, um, a more dominant dog come by the food, the other dog or animal will just leave the food. You'll see that in lions also. You'll even see it on my yard when the chickens come to peck at the dog's food. Um, they know that they're not allowed to mess with the chickens. Is it a dominance thing in that regard? No, it's probably like they're gonna get in trouble. And that's the same thing that you guys got to do at home if your dog is resource guarding. You do not want the dog to see a child as the bottom of the totem pole and them in the middle and then attack the child for a resource. Having an old dog that has good days and bad days, putting them down or just naturally letting it happen. It's a tough decision I'm in. He's not in pain. He still eats and poos but collapses sometimes. Heart failure of being old. I don't know how people can do it. Thanks. I can't tell you uh, what the decision to make is on this one. Uh, this is not an easy decision by any means. This is a personal decision based on what you see and your lifestyle. Um, unfortunately, this is a part of life. This is a part of owning dogs and it sucks. And I don't think there is any right decision. I don't think there's a, there's no easy decision. I wouldn't say right decision. There's no easy decision. Uh, you got to make the judgment call. We all know it sucks. It's life. You're not doing anything wrong, unfortunately. If the dog is suffering, potentially it's a good it's a good thing to put the dog down. But you got to judge that. This is a total personal decision, and uh, I'm sorry you got to make this decision. A lot of us have. Probably everybody that owns a dog has been through this sometime or another, and um, I'm sorry that you got to go through this. I wish you the best. This question is: Do you ever fast your dog? If so, for how many hours? Um, yes, I fast my dogs here and there. I don't really have it on a schedule. It just happens when I'm busy and um, I just give them a fast. It's not a big deal. Um, but if I see them leaning out too lean, then I will add food in their diet. I just watch them. I want them to be fairly lean. In the winter, I like them a little more heavier if I can, uh, a little more chunkier. But generally in the summer, I want them lean. But fasting to me is a good thing. I think it's a natural thing. I don't think animals and humans eat at the same time every day. Um, unfortunately and fortunately, we have the option to do that, but I think it's good to do a little fasting for both humans and dogs. As far as how many hours, I just do a day. Um, with myself, I've done three days. Uh, with the dogs, I do a day or two, max. This question is the keys to success in your opinion. 
Uh, I don't know if I would be considered successful, but um, I would say the keys to success would be to overcome adversity and get used to being stressed out and, and dealing with stress, how you adapt to the stress, how you deal with stress, how you mitigate situations is probably the keys to success. Um, trying to learn your craft, be better at your craft, try not to waste time in the day on bullshit, um, I would say is probably the key to success. Um, if you're regarding me as successful, I appreciate it. Um, I think I'm just run of the mill. Um, I'm trying every day. I'm trying not to spend any time doing bullshit. I'm trying to make every minute count or at least every time count. And I want to be as efficient as possible as much as I can because that little wins, those little wins uh, compound over time. I would also say stand up for what you believe as long as your beliefs are within reason to be good and your values are in line with good values, then I would say stand up for what you believe. I would also think that keeping your word and being serious about what you say, what you say you follow through with, I think that's very important. Um, I think that people that know me well respect me because I don't really say things that I don't mean, um, but that also gets me in trouble. So it's a two-sided sword. Um, but yeah, be honest, as honest as you can. Obviously, you can be nice and still be honest, which I'm learning to do. Um, but you can be honest, and I think people will respect that. There's a lot of bullshit in the world, and I think people are tired of bullshitters. A lot of people are fake and um, probably don't want to be like that. I would say try to be as genuine as you can. Um, and be as real as you can without being super disrespectful. That's something that I've had to come over. I'm not being disrespectful, but we live in a society where everybody has hurt feelings because you tell them the truth or your honesty. Now, your opinion is an opinion, right? So if I say, hey, you're doing something dumb, that's my opinion. So people don't have to listen, but unfortunately we live in a world where everybody's got feelings and um, People want advice, people want success, and then you tell them, hey, stop do drinking, stop you know, doing this, stop screwing around on the phone texting chicks. They don't want to hear that, okay? And then they're like, oh, you're just a hater. You said your life sucks. Um, get your ass to the gym, focus on your, your goals. Uh, and then they say you're mean. You can't change everybody's uh, perception, you can't change everybody's opinion. So just continue working on yourself and uh, remember that it's not something that happens overnight. It's the small little wins that compound over time. You go to the gym, you lift some weights. Okay, it was crappy, weight day. Six months later, you've got better technique, you've got better routine, you've got better you know, functionality. Now you're looking better, you can go harder, and then all of a sudden a year or two later, two years later, you have more, muscle, more muscles, you're more flexible, you're stronger, you're faster. I mean, it's a, it's a long, game that you're playing. So that's my opinion. This is a big one. Uh, we need to remember the success is not always financial. You got a nice car and you got a nice house or whatever the case is. That's not always success. Success is mental clarity and happiness. There's people that are happy that have nothing. Those people are very successful. And uh, we live in North America where we all want nice things. I'm guilty of it. Uh, I'm striving for certain things, but I've also learned that achieving certain things um, as much as they feel good, they're not really the driver that makes you happy. You know, what makes you happy is, well, for me, is helping people and putting smiles on people's faces, making people laugh, um, enjoying my time with my family. And the, the finer things in life, as much as I like them, are not necessarily important. There was a time when I was living in a small box in the hood, and I was very happy. Very simple life. I built my bed out of two by fours. I had concrete floors, was nothing fancy at all. I had a little TV and all I was doing was grinding and learning every day and working and I was very happy. Uh, 20 years later, I'm trying to you know do this, do that, build this, build that, I'm stressed out, you know? So am I happy? No, but I'm driven and the, dr the drivenness uh, to achieve these goals and conquer these goals are what makes me happy now. So. You know, put it in perspective. Not everybody's uh, idea of success is the same. Um, so you got to put that in perspective. Keep up the good work. Well, all I'm doing is trying to be the best that I can every day. Um, continue to learn, continue to grow, 
continue to tackle my goals. I only have a few more life goals that I want to achieve, and then I want to really back down and relax. Um, I've been going hard since I was like 15 years old, so uh, it's I need a break. But I like learning. I like overcoming obstacles. I like when somebody says that this can't be done better and I can do it better at their game, at their own game, and I'm not a professional in their game. So um, I like that. It's a challenge, and... It also gives me knowledge on the field of craft that they're in and to see if I'm better at it or if I can trust their judgment. And that's very important to me. And um, that skill has become a really good skill to have. Should I let my dog sniff around during walks? For me, if you're asking my personal opinion, no, they shouldn't be sniffing on the walk. But I have a whole, this is like a whole conversation on why and why not and how to walk. Um, there's a module in my course, there's a few modules actually, but there's a module specifically on the structured walk and why you should do a structured walk. Love you guys. Be safe. Don't be a piece of shit. Have a nice day.